The British royal family recently suffered intense embarrassment when it was revealed that the father of the Duchess of Kent was an SS officer. To be a member of Hitler's SS, families had to be pure Aryan, with their German ancestry clearly traceable to the Teutonic Knights of medieval Germany. Like most of the British royal family, the Duchess of Kent is descended from German blood. Her German ancestors have throughout history been members of the Illuminati Secret Society Network. The British royal family's name is not Windsor. Their real family name is actually Saxa Coburg Gotha. In his book, The Forgotten Monarchy of Scotland, his Royal Highness Prince Michael of Albany publishes ancient heraldic documents which expose the true lineage of the British royals. Ancient heraldic documents suggest that the British royal family's lineage comes from ancient Hebrew or Jewish tribes of the Old Testament. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, she referred to England as Israel or Jerusalem. Uh, according to the Masonic reference works that you can get in any library, the, uh, <clears throat> the Freemasonic orders of Europe said that there was a little ideologue, a little spiritual entity that gave the knowledge to what the Masons call our hidden masters. That's what Freemasonry re refers to those who lead world Freemasonry. They don't know who they are. No, no Freemason knows who the, the actual leaders of the world organization are. They call them our hidden masters. Well, according to the reference works, there is a little spiritual entity that, that guides the world Freemasonry, and they call him Yoda. And in, the, and in the reference works, you'll see this little creature with the, with the pointed ears, and he's called Yoda. Yota goes back to Judah, or Judah, which goes back into British Israel world Freemasonry, going back to the time of, uh, of the founding of England, and that's why they're today called British. The British, it's a very big difference between being English and British. Brit is Hebrew for a contract or a covenant, and ish means man in Hebrew. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, her personal spy, Mr. John Dee, was responsible for establishing the British Secret Service. John Dee was a magician and member of an alchemical secret order. He is thought to be the author of the ancient Voynich Manuscript, which is now owned by Yale University, and is kept under lock and key just a few yards away from the headquarters of the Skull and Bones Secret Society. The Duchess of Kent might be ashamed of her father having been a member of the SS but she might equally be keen to play down the fact that her husband, the Duke of Kent, is Britain's most senior royal Freemason. The Duke and Duchess of Kent live at Kensington Palace, which is home to the Royal Alpha Masonic Lodge. The Royal Alpha Lodge was established by the Duke of Sussex after he became Grand Master of United Grand Lodge 
in 1813. One of its most eminent members was the physician in ordinary to Queen Victoria, Sir William Gull, who Stephen Knight claims was responsible, along with several other eminent Freemasons, for the Jack the Ripper murders in Victorian London. Suitably, members of the Royal Alpha Lodge at Kensington Palace are called Princes of the Blood Royal. Secret societies across the planet proudly claim to have geniuses such as Mozart and Kings amongst their membership. But none of these secret societies allow their members to speak of the rituals which go on behind closed doors in palaces and government buildings around the world. The satanic rituals of Freemasonry have been practiced by several kings of England, but all those questions sweep Freemasonry's darkest satanic secrets under a very plush carpet. Howardy in Tawi, Tim Jaffa Kau, Tarpin M. Awef, Mu F, Tarif, Sem F, Minaminit F. Nebit, Hyat Nebit, Henenit Nebit, Jedefuit F, Awit F. Hasit, Semau M. Sanuit. One of the most influential secret societies spawned by the Bavarian Illuminati is the Order of the Golden Dawn. It was founded in 1887 by a Freemason, William Wynne Westcott, who claimed to have deciphered a coded alchemical script containing initiation rituals of a secret German occult order called Die Golden Dammerung. Westcott already had plenty of experience conducting occult rituals. In 1865, he had helped establish a Masonic order called the Societas Rosicruciana, inspired by the Jewish magic of the Hebrew Kabbalah. These rituals are still enacted at study group meetings at the United Grand Lodge in London. For many years, the Golden Dawn held its meetings at the London headquarters of the Mark Masons. The Golden Dawn was plagued with scandal as rival high-ranking Masons wrestled for control of this influential Victorian secret society. In 1891, Westcott lost control of the Golden Dawn to another high-ranking Freemason magician called McGregor Mathers. Together with the poet W.B. Yeats, they devised new magical rituals and initiated the senior members of Britain's aristocracy. In 1903, control of the Golden Dawn was yet again seized by another Freemason called A.E. Waite. The rituals of the Golden Dawn were similar to ancient witchcraft. At the Old Bailey in 1901, two Golden Dawn associates, Mr. and Mrs. Horos, were tried for rape. They had used the Golden Dawn initiation ceremony to beguile their teenage victims. The Golden Dawn was nothing more than Freemasonry with added semi-satanic and sexual mysteries. The Golden Dawn still survives to this day. In 1987, a conference was held in London to commemorate the centenary of the Golden Dawn's conception. The conference was organized by the Hermetic Research Trust, whose trustees include the Marquess of Northampton, 
who is a prominent Royal Arch Freemason. Satanists do not um, uh, take part in certain rituals with certain sounds in certain places and certain colors and certain um, you know verbal statements they don't do it because all oh, that be nice let's say that and then we'll like, shall we have a bit of red or what do you think no no it's done because everything in this reality is vibration um, consciousness in this reality is vibration everything is a vibrational field this is how astrology works um, when we're born uh, the, where the planets are they're sending out um, uh, vibrational uh, uh, projections that are affecting the vibrational field that we are born into and that's why we are affected differently at different times of the year therefore they understand this and they're manipulating these vibrational fields all the time to manipulate us and so these rituals and, and oh just a pageant it's like it's like the, the freemasonic rituals you know you talk to um freemasons the vast majority of freemasons not trying to manipulate anyone not on a mass scale anyway and they'll say oh well, I, I, so what about these rituals like, oh i don't know they do silly things you always try to leg up and bare your bloody breast i don't know it's an ancient bloody tradition i don't know what it's all about anyway you, you know they, they do a nice dinner you know so you only have to do it once they don't realize that these um initiation rituals are actually set up to affect the participants in a certain way that allows these other dimensional entities which folklore have talked about for thousands of years all over the bloody planet this uh, theme of possession by demons um, these are um, um, entities that exist just outside the frequency range of the five senses because you know again because of the suppression of basic knowledge of who we are and the nature of life we become child's play to manipulate um, for instance people look through their eyes and they think they're seeing everything in the space they're looking at no no they're seeing a fraction of it they're seeing um, a tiny frequency range that the five senses can access just like if you tune to radio one you get radio one you don't get radio two you get radio one um, and this is why you know if there was a cat in this room now it might be reacting to what is to us here empty space but it's not empty space to the cat because it has a greater visual frequency range now, just outside the frequency range of the five senses are entities that are manipulating this five sense reality through these particular bloodlines. And, and one of the key places where this possession takes place is during these satanic rituals and, and, and gatherings when the vibrational environment is created by the ritual that allows this um, takeover of the mental and emotional processes of these people um, to take place. And this is why um, you'll meet so many uh, people who've known famous politicians and staff when they started in politics or before they came into politics. And they'll say, you know, mate, that guy ain't the bloke that I knew. Well, mentally and emotionally, that's literally true in a lot of cases because of this possession that takes place. And people think it's kind of far-fetched and almost maddening. That, that, that may be happening in Babylon, but not now. Well, please. Um, that very thought is the greatest defense mechanism this grotesque conspiracy has to protect it. agganciato qui no? Tanto si è agganciato di là, quindi è eh, aperto dentro, no? Poi io leggo eh, le mani, eh, le mani qui, qui, leggo i piedi, i piedi qui alla... Si può vedere, si può vedere questi? E eh, questo leggermente si... ecco, può legare il braccio, vedete? legare il braccio di qua di là e i piedi lo stesso a questo a piolo, eh, dunque e qui se c'è questa cinta perché eh, sono terribili questa, questa qui per legare alla vita la vita in modo che non si muova 
Mentre non vede questo, mette questo ma cioè, sotto vede, qui c'è, ecco, si ferma in questo modo, si ferma, altrimenti non si legge, e rompono tutto. Ah, dunque, tutto questo, adesso vi faccio vedere, vi faccio vedere cosa sono capace di fare questo qui. Questo, questo può essere una ragazza che, guarda, questo è d'acciaio, questo è, corrisponde a questo qui, eh, no, corrisponde, vediamo qua. Guarda, passo una qui dentro, se lo troviamo. Eh, eh, questo qui sarebbe questo. Vedete come l'ha ridotto? È difficile poi vedere, perché con le mani non è, non è possibile. Ha visto? Il demone pure dell'esorcista. L'esorcismo è lui che ha paura e non abbiamo paura noi. E, e sono contento di dare il botto al demone. Quando mi dice il demone chi sei? Io devo domanda, Satana. Ah, ora mi sei capitato. Adesso ti ho dato un sacco di botte. Dunque, e, e, e quindi è lui che grida, perché quando grida la persona, ci sono dei gridi qui delle suore che, che si sentono a forza fino, fino in fondo, fino, fino alla strada si sentono, dunque nel giardino, ma non è la, la, certamente la persona che grida, ma è il demonio che sente questa, queste botte, diciamo così. Martina and her parents have been coming to see Padre Alfredo regularly for the past six months. The family has turned to the exorcist in an attempt to solve problems which have troubled their daughter since she was eight years old. Although Martina comes to the sessions willingly, as soon as she enters Padre Alfredo's bunker, she suffers a violent reaction. For her own safety, she has to be restrained before the exorcism can begin. Ma buona, forza, ci abbiamo pensato, ci abbiamo pensato. The exorcism consists of a ritual first formulated in 1614 and updated by the Vatican two years ago. Nel nome del Padre, del Figlio e dello Spirito Santo. Signor Gesù Cristo, Figlio di Padre Eterno Padre, Dio Universo, Signore di Padre, Santo e Santo, Dio di Padre, 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 Dunque c'è, ho notato questo, a volte il demonio, eh, quando, siccome è l'esorcismo, sono come se uno bastonate, picchia il demonio, no? e mette l'acqua santa nella per la mano, br mi brucia, oh, 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 mi sono accorto di questo, il demonio è furbo e cerca di parlare per, per, per riposarsi. Avete visto mai i pugili? I pugili? Quando si danno i pugni, a un certo punto si abbracciano. Si riposano, si riposano, respirano un attimo, il demonio fa la stessa tattica, dunque parla e io invece non, devo, non bisogna dargli retta, continuare il sorcismo, in modo che non c'è tregua, sono botte, 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 botte. Avio Maria, piena di grazia, il Signore è con te, tu sei benedetta fra le donne, eh, Mourinho, Mourinho, Ave Maria, piena di grazia, il Signore è con te, tu sei benedetta fra le donne, benedetta fra le donne. Santa Maria, ma Sono libera, ma Maria, no, no, ma maligno, maligno, il Cristo è più forte, caccia di via, no, di la verità, di la verità, di la verità, di la verità questa signora, esiste o non esisti tu? Il demonio esiste o non esiste? Esiste, esiste il demonio! Come fai a dimostrarlo? Come fai a dimostrarlo che esiste? Non le guerre, tutto, tutto!
Ma qui sta... Ma questo! E chi ma... non ci crede bene? Ma, ma qui... Questo... The Golden Dawn's most notorious member was a self-confessed Satanist, Alastair Crowley, who styled himself as the Beast. Crowley was one of the pantheon of cult figures portrayed on the cover of the Beatles record, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Crowley had already been trying to contact the devil in 1898 when he first made contact with the Order of the Golden Dawn. By 1900, Crowley was mingling with the elite of British society, sharing his knowledge of devil worship with leading Masonic politicians, aristocrats and royalty. Crowley was a full-time occultist and had no day job in which he had to hide his fascination with Freemasonry and Satanism. In his book, Confessions, Crowley claims he was initiated into Freemasonry at the Anglo-Saxon Lodge in Paris. He also recounts how he became master of one of London's oldest and most respected lodges, the Studholm Lodge, which is now rumoured to have Tony Blair as one of its members. Crowley shared Albert Pike's enthusiasm for the devil. In his book entitled Magic, Crowley writes, The devil is this serpent, Satan. He is life and love. He is light, and his zodiacal image is Capricornus, the leaping goat, the godhead. Secret societies often portray the goat of Mendes sitting in the Baphomet position. A statue of George Washington himself, a high-ranking Freemason, shows one of America's founding fathers sitting in the same occult posture as Crowley's goat-headed devil. In 1912, Crowley became the British leader of the Ordo Templi Orientis, the OTO, which was a direct descendant to the original Bavarian Illuminati. The OTO 
was a hardcore satanic secret society, and Crowley devised the initiation ritual around the 33rd degree ceremony of Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Crowley claimed the formation of the OTO was reconstituting Freemasonry back to its German Illuminati roots. Crowley wanted nothing less than to dance with the devil. He was impatient with the politeness of Masonic ritual. He described basic Freemasonry in the lower ranks as a sinister association for political intrigues and pirates.